You mother... Well, I had more grad parties to go to this weekend, so I stopped at a few liquor stores along the way. Um, I stopped at three stores, but I only got footage of two for this video because one is one I did in a previous video and I had already had footage of that. So um, I did pick up a couple of bottles along the way and I'll get to those at the end. But our first stop is MGM Liquors in Waconia, Minnesota. MGM's got a solid variety, so we got some kind of overflow bottles here, as you can see, stacked up on the floor. But they've got a decent amount of uh, kind of your basic stuff, but they've got a couple of gems sometimes on the shelves as well. Usually fairly priced. Um, these High West ones, I've been told in the comments to not pass those by. Those barrel picks, uh, that double rye. Um, so I'm going to have to check that at some point. Uh, there's that bullet single barrel again. Still want to get my hands on one of those. Haven't had that actually. I haven't had any of the higher proof bullet uh, expressions, so I definitely need to try one of those. And then you get the old school Maker's Private Select label. I kind of want to get that just because I'm a sucker for a discontinued label. Speaking of which, there's the Bell Mead and then the Nelson Brothers. I think that's what Bell Mead became. And then right there, all of those Jay Carver products, those are from a distillery in Minnesota that's about three blocks from where this store is. And they're starting to release some older age stuff. Um, they got a seven year that just came out and I haven't had anything but their very basic two year 80 proof version. So definitely want to get into trying some of that older age and they've got some cast drink stuff too. So at some point I'm going to get into that. Never go wrong with the OG D114. And then the glass case, not too much in there. There's a Booker's off to the left there, but I think that was like $175, and that's an immediate no for me. And then again, some overflow stuff. So pretty good variety of bottles. Um, the glass case, you know, like that Booker's, I think I said it was $175 or something. That's getting a little wild for me on the Booker's. I think those are getting a little pricing me out of my interest in them at $100, which is kind of the going rate now. Uh, but they had some good stuff there. Um, those Jay Carvers that I mentioned are a, a local distillery in Waconia. Like I said, it's like three blocks from the, the liquor store. And they've got a whole bunch of stuff. They've got other stuff besides just whiskeys, but they've got a wheat whiskey. They've got a couple of different ryes, some bourbons, and they're starting to release some older age stuff. So I'm really interested in that because, um, like I mentioned, the only one I've had is the base model the like two year 80 proof one. And that's not really a fair way to, you know, decide if a, a distillery is doing good bourbon or not. So looking forward to that seven year. And then they also have a cask strength. I'm trying to maybe get my hands on at some point too. Um, but yeah, overall, just a, a pretty good go-to store. So the next one, I was on my way down to Shakopee. And so when I got down to Shakopee, I stopped at a store that I tend to like to stop to, um, this uh, chain of stores actually. And that's High V Liquors. hy V is another good store for kind of all your good basic stuff, but then every once in a while something you don't see everywhere. These Kings County I see once in a while. I don't know anything about those. Um, if you can give me some info in the comments, let me know if that's worth it. They seem a little high priced for something that I just don't know anything about. Got some old Elks, can never go wrong there. As far as I'm concerned, Greg and I both really like those. Also Old Forester, can never go wrong. Um, hy V is also fairly well known for their store picks. You can usually find uh, some really good stuff. Uh, the Heaven's Door 10 year, 80 bucks for a 10 year. I don't know when you've got stuff like Russell's Reserve out there on the shelf, it's kind of hard to justify that price, but that seems to be the going rate for those. So I don't know if I'll get into a bottle of that or not. I'm still kind of on the fence about that. Love seeing those Knob Creek single barrels. I've mentioned in videos before, just seeing those on the shelves is pretty awesome because they were gone for a while. I also like checking the uh, date on those obtainiums because the, uh, the age statement on those seems to be getting less and less. Never had any of the Woodenville products. I've heard decent things, but it's also a pot still, and I haven't had the best of luck with pot still bourbon, so I don't know. That's another one I'd love to hear your uh, opinions on in the comments.
and of course the rare breed, which is everywhere in Minnesota now, so that makes me happy. Here's another bullet store pick. But this one here, the Southern Collective Spirit Company, this is a barrel pick. And the guy told me a little bit about it, and I can't for the life of me remember all the details. I think it's from North Carolina and then bottled in Tennessee, if I remember correctly. It says on the label there. But yeah, seems super interesting. Again, just a solid variety of bottles, pretty much anything you need. Prices were fair. Um, I mentioned that Hy-Vee is good for store picks. This one only had a couple um, at the moment, but I have really, really good luck with store picks at Hy-Vee. And speaking of which, that bottle that I saw at the end, I'm gonna grab my phone, make sure I get the name of this place right. Can never remember. Southern Collective Spirit Company. And from what I gather, I think they just do barrel picks or something. Um, the guy that works down there, a uh, guy named Denali, super nice guy. I like to talk to him when I go in there. Super knowledgeable about bourbon, super helpful. So if you get a chance, definitely swing into that store, the High V in Shakopee. If he's there, chat with him about bourbon. He's always got some good info on what's coming out. Um, and he can give you the information on that bottle that I just happened to forget. It, was, uh, it sounded like a cool kind of uh, uh, collaboration or something like that. And I think there's only like 201 or 207 bottles made. Uh, so yeah, I might go back and get that one at some point, but after I left that store, I knew I was going to be parking my car out in the heat for a few hours. And the last time I did that, the cork blew out of the bottle and sprayed the backseat of my car with whiskey. So I, I didn't get anything at Hy-Vee, but I did get something at MGM. I know I put that store first on the, uh, the hunting video here, but it was actually on the way home, so I was able to get something there. And then I did stop at a Total Wine and grab a couple things too. So I'm gonna get into that right now. Here's the bottles. So the one I did get at MGM, bam, not this bottle, because this is partially gone, but I did get another one of these Old Forester single barrel, barrel strengths. That's a store pick. We reviewed this on the channel, it's excellent. So I picked up a bottle of this for a friend of mine, a friend of mine who may also have a bourbon channel, Brian and Lauren over at Bourbon School. So go check their channel out and subscribe. And then when I stopped at Total Wine, again, that's the one I didn't get footage of just because I already have that one on a video. I did pick up a couple of mini bottles here of Clyde Mays. Greg and I reviewed the Clyde Mays single barrel and both liked it. And we we're kind of interested, but that one's 108 proof. Uh, we we're kind of interested in just seeing what the basic Clyde Mays is all about, so I picked up the 85 proof Alabama style whiskey, distilled in Cocoa, Florida. Weird. And then we picked up the straight bourbon whiskey, and this one I believe is an MGP. So it's kind of nice to run into the, the little mini bottles when you don't, I don't know if I would actually want to spend the full price for one of these, just to see if we may or may not like it, especially at 85 proof. So awesome to see that they had some mini bottles of this so we can get a review and see if we should pick up a bottle of this or if you should maybe pick up a bottle of this. And then I also picked up, finally, I've been passing this one by in previous hunting videos, but I've had people tell me, you gotta get it, it's on its way out, it's discontinued, bam. This is the Bell Mead Reserve Bourbon, 108.3 proof, no age statement, it just says age to perfection. Uh, this one is MGP juice, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, this one uh, is discontinued. And so I eventually had to get a bottle of this because as much as I had been passing it up, and it's not that expensive, maybe 67 bucks, I think is what I paid for it. It's gonna be one of those ones where if it finally does go away, I'm gonna regret it because then it's gone and then I will have never had a chance to taste it. So happy to have finally picked this one up. I was just kind of taking for granted for a long time that it was still around here. And I've gotten bit a couple times doing that with other bottles that I ended up missing out on. So decided to finally pull the trigger on this. So I'm excited to review this one. I've heard great things which makes me wonder why they got rid of it. And I think they replaced it with Nelson Brothers, which I have heard is not nearly as good. So anyway, these are the bottles. Look for uh, Bourbon School's review of this old Forester. I'm assuming they're gonna do one. I don't know when it's gonna come out. It may be a little while, but in the meantime, go subscribe to their channel. And uh, yeah, if you wanna subscribe to another Bourbon channel that you may not already be subscribed to, subscribe to the Bourbon Note. 
We're almost at 2,000 subscribers, and we'd love to hit that milestone sooner than later. So if you could help us out and do that, please do so. But until next time, uh, yeah, cheers. <laughs>